uh, Little Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, as per usual, thank you for everybody uh, who commented on last week's episode of the show, watched it. Um, certainly, it seemed to uh, inspire an awful lot of, of comments again. Um, and um, obviously, uh, I appreciate everybody's opinions, and, and I have no issue with anybody anybody's opinion, even if they are slightly grumpy opinions. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, no, uh, it, it's it, it's fine. I mean, you know, <laughs> we all we all have opinions at the end of the day, uh, and um, you know, every, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. And you know, some you know, some people will agree and disagree with with certain things. Not always what what I'm saying, anyway. Um, and um, <laughs> it's fine. It's you know, it's what what makes uh, whiskey, you know, a, a wonderful a wonderful thing, really. And you know, it, it sparks debate. And not just about the liquid, but you know about sort of distilleries' approaches or bottling companies' approaches and things like that. So um, please keep the comments on going. Uh, it is, like I said, it's very much appreciated. And um, as you probably well know, we're now heading for um, uh, another month-long uh, national lockdown. Um, I don't know whether the shop will remain open throughout that period of time. I mean, certainly during the last lockdown, uh, we closed the shop to physical customers but we kept trading and I imagine it's probably we're going to do something similar we'll certainly do online probably do click and collect I would imagine um, and while we're on the subject of Spring Bank which is the topic of today's uh, show uh, I'll be sorting out the, the latest orders uh, that, that are ready to go out and I'll be doing that from Monday so if you have um, if you're planning to come into the shop and collect your Spring Bank order then please do so before Thursday um, and if you haven't paid for your spring bank orders yet please do so before Thursday because we're going to need the money um, you know I'll be honest with you on that one so um, and yeah like I said I mean I'll, I'll, the plan is to get everybody's orders out uh, as soon as possible probably Monday Tuesday uh, depending upon what what my workload is going to be like um, but anyway, so today's episode of the show, as you can see, it's just another Springbank episode of the show. And, well, why not? You know, there's so many of you guys that love Springbank and that you watch the show and, and hopefully, you know, get a few new people to come in and, and say, yeah, I'll watch some of your other shows. I just, you know, won't just watch your Springbank episode. Um, so, yes, I'm kind of doing it for the views, as they say. Um, but also, I love the distillery as well, as you well know. And this will be... I think my seventh episode of the show in God knows how many years, which is quite a lot considering there's a lot of distilleries I haven't ever done at all. Um, and the part of the reason why I wanted to do this episode of, uh, on Springbank, well, there was two reasons. Firstly was, uh, I can't remember who it was, commented on one of the previous, on one of my last videos, not a Springbank video, that I hadn't actually re ever reviewed the 10-year-old. And I thought, must have done. I couldn't have done seven odd episodes or six episodes of, of, of the show on Springbank and never reviewed the 10. And I had a look back and I have actually reviewed the 10 on a couple of occasions, although the last time was 2015. And I thought, well, yeah, OK, it's probably about time to uh, have another look at the 10 year old. And it was quite apt because my good friend uh, Ian Sunderland uh, kindly dropped me in most of the samples for today's episode of the show, including an old bottling of the 10 year old, um, which dated from 2005. Now, I've always thought that the, the, ten, the old 10 year old, uh, probably up until about, I would say, 2012, 2013, was pretty variable, to be honest with you, uh, in, in quality. Um, I would say post sort of 2012, 2013, it has certainly become like the 10 year old I'd beg to a certain extent, um, probably one of the most improved 10 year olds uh, on, on the market. And nowadays it's pretty consistent. Um, and I thought it'd be nice to sort of, you know, uh, obviously get a brand spanking off the you know the peg <laughs> kind of if you like uh bottling uh, th this being sort of i think uh this was a uh, october this year in actual fact it's pretty much just a, only just physically arrived in the shop um yes it was october this year bottling code 20 uh, uh 129 um and because the thing is that part i think the reason for the uh, the 10 year old being 
quite variable was probably casks. Uh, there were probably casks being used up, I mean, we well know during the, 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 the silent period and uh, probably before and after that, there were casks being used that were probably, should we say, slightly past their use by date. But anyway, um, it was also, I think, that probably back then, back 2005, certainly back in the days when I first started in the industry, around about in you know 2000, um, it was a well-known practice that the ten-year-old wasn't necessarily all ten-year-old. You know, a lot of distilleries would use older spirit to sort of, you know, um, kind of uh, bulk out their their, their ten-year-old or, or twelve-year-old or whatever the case may be. And it, you know, it 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 was done. I mean, and it, I think really, sort of, when we hit the credit crunch, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. There was a seismic shift in in the industry. Maybe certain things had been in the kind of pipeline, but I think that sort of that seemed to me that there was a really big shift in distilleries' um, approach post sort of credit crunch. Maybe it was the fact that they were concerned that there was going to be you know another eighties whiskey lake. Um, there would be closures, things like that. So a a lot of distilleries started to sort of like hold on to their older stocks age statements kind of disappeared i mean springbank was no, no it was wasn't immune to that uh, i mean take for example the cv range and that was released i think around about 2010 2011 um and so distilleries were going yeah okay well we need to sort of hold on to our older stock we can't really stick that into a 10 year old um and like i said the, the, the new the no age statement bottling started to become more prevalent that kind of thing and uh, to be honest with you, I mean, uh, I think, I wouldn't say it was like being disingenuous by putting older spirit in with your 10 year old, but you're not getting a real picture of what the distillery's spirit was like at 10 years old, certainly if you're, you know, if you're bolstering it up. Um, and so now I think you're starting to see a more consistent, um, a more consistent 10 year old from Springbank. And something that tastes more in line, I think, with what their spirit is like at 10 years old. Um, so, yeah, I think from... Uh, so I'm kind of really looking forward to this from a technical point of view, and hopefully you, know, you guys will, will find it sort of intriguing as well. So, um, like I said, the, uh, the, the, the my good friend uh, Ian Sunderland kindly sort of dropped in a load of samples of various bits and pieces, uh, including... Uh, as you will see from the title page, the uh, It's All About Springbank uh, Facebook Group's bottle. Uh, and I know there's probably going to be a lot of you that, uh, that have either bought it or, or uh, members of the, 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 uh, the Facebook group. Um, so hopefully you'll find my review of that sort of interesting as well. And uh, hopefully um, I won't be uh, getting a rude email from Ronnie. <laughs> um, of course I won't, because it's not going to be crap, is it? Um, Anyway, so uh, let, let's uh, let's just take a look at uh, today's live. I don't care. Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with the currently available uh, ten-year-old. This is the October 2020 bottling code 22219. Uh, uh, the next bottling we'll be looking at is the older ten-year-old. This is. Um, code 202 stroke 05 so bottled in 2005 then we're going to look at um well this could be in a 19 or a 20 year old i'm not entirely sure what uh this was a a, a private uh, bottling that uh, um ian picked up at auction uh, it didn't have a label uh, or anything whatsoever it could have been absolutely anything so i'm i'm amazed he decided to sort of like uh, take their word for it and and, and purchased it um, all I know is it was distilled in uh, 1992, bottled sometime in 2002. So, like I said, it could either be a 19 or a 20 year old, and it is bottled at 59.6%. And as you can see from the colour, all aged in American oak. Right. So uh, the next bottle we'll be looking at is the brand spanking new. Uh, well, yeah, 21 year old that was released in uh, in or bottled in August. Uh, of this year and um, sold out pretty quickly because it's a, a four cask jobby but look at that colour on that will you I mean phew, I mean this is apparently that's only 25% sherry for god's sake and that colour 
Ooh, um, yeah, I wonder whether you're going to get a lot, a lot from the other casks. Um, so uh, it's 30% bourbon, 30% rum, 25% sherry, like I said, and 15% port. Uh, code on that is 2068, so uh, should be interesting. Uh, next bottling we'll be looking at is uh, a the 24-year-old single cask bottling that was released uh, back in April of 2019. Uh, it's a sherry hogshead, but as you can see, look at the difference in colour. Um, it was bottled at 46.2% and distilled in 1994. And the last bottling uh, we'll be looking at is uh, the, uh, like I said, it's the All About uh, Springbank Group bottling, uh, bottled by Whiskey Broker. Uh, it was distilled in April of 1993, bottled in May of this year. It's a single bourbon barrel, number 265, and bottled at 51.3%. So, there you go. That's uh, uh, this week's lineup. Hopefully, it's going to be interesting. Let's kick off with a bit of tech. Right, okay, so let's kick off with the, uh, the new 10 year old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? It's a touch more sherry than I remember, um, or certainly uh, from previous ten-year-old taste, tastings, and I've, I've tasted it on, you know, on a relatively regular basis. Um, and um, I mean, I know, I know there's always a, a, a small amount of sherry in um, in the vatting of the ten-year-old, but certainly over the last couple of occasions, the sherry influence has been pretty negligible. Um, so this has actually got quite a bit of sherry. I mean, it's not by any stretch of the imagination the monster. Um, I'm just saying that it's got, and that's the first thing I notice is, hmm, there's a bit more sherry there. Um, and there's a little bit more dried fruit and there's a, you know, a little bit of more spice, but it's still got that lovely sort of fresh, salty, um, slightly fishy, briny, slightly sort of malty character, you know, it's, it's you know, it's a classic Springbank, you know, this is what you expect of the Springbank 10 year old, it's, it's got a, it's got a lovely um, uh, complexity to it, um, there's a little bit of citrus, um, it's got a, a, a nice light lemony note, it's got, yeah, it's balanced, uh, there's a, a little bit of peat as well, it's got some it's got it's actually got quite a nice sweet fruitiness as well. There's a bit of bit of almost kind of clementine. There's apricot. Um, it's like I said, it's not quite as austere as, as some of the of the previous bottlings. And um, and although I would say that yes, the the bottlings have varied a little bit in um, style. Um, often depending upon, I suppose, whether there's more sherry or, or, or less sherry influence. Um, the quality, I think, like I said, since about 2012, 2013, has been, you know, con been spot on, uh, absolutely spot on. Anyway, let's see what it passes like. oily, opens up with more of the American oak, there's a slight creaminess to the oak, um, again plenty of barley, fish oils, a little bit of peat, sherry sort of starts to come in on the mid palate, a little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of tannin, oh that's got a lovely sweetness to it, um, almost kind of like a, I wouldn't quite go as far as saying rummy uh, sweetness, um, but it's slightly there, you know, and uh, um, it's got a little bit of prune, a little bit of raisin as well on, on the finish, a little bit of um, <clears throat> almost kind of like a coffee, uh, not quite coffee, but just sort of almost almost moving into that kind of uh, area, um, a little bit of spice as well, I mean that is lovely, I mean really very impressive, and you know, it's what? 40 something you know still pretty good value for money in my, my opinion um, and um, yeah that's a nice one to start with yes. 
Right, OK, so let's move on to the old 10-year-old. Uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Right, less sherry, certainly. Um, more peat. Feels older as well. It certainly doesn't have that sort of um, fresh uh, character. Um, it's really aromatic as violets, barley, subtler fish oils. Uh, and like I said, it definitely, definitely has an impression of, of more age. This is, you know, um, some lovely creamy American oak as well. A um, little bit of toastiness. I mean, this just reminds me of older Springbank, full stop, you know. Uh, if I was nosing this blind, you know, I would have said this was this was more edging towards mid-teens, I would say. I mean, it's, it's a possibility that, that there is some um, mid-teens spirit vatted in here. Because, um, like I said, it certainly doesn't have the youthful, salty, um, fishy briny character that the, uh, the, the current 10 year old has so to me like I said this seems to uh, you know indicate there was uh, older spirit here at work um, so it passed like well the first thing you notice is more peat again medicinal almost um, it's violety, there's no sherry, it's all American oak. Um, again, it feels older. Um, that oak has a sort of like, just a, a feeling of maturity to it. Um, still quite oily, fishy. Like I said, there's not so much of that lemony kind of um, fresh, tart, almost citrus note. It, it, it does, like I said, it feels a lot older. Um, and although it's it's hard to say, I mean it's, it's it's a lovely bottling, it has to be said. But it, like I said, um, when you vat in some older spirit, which uh, it certainly appears has, has been done here, um, you're not getting a real feeling for what the spirit is actually like at ten years of age. It could because it just tastes <laughs> a lot older. But you know, um, you could argue that sort of back in the day, you were, you were probably getting more for your money back then. I mean, and like I say, Springbank were not the only distillery that, that that carried out that sort of practice. It was it was well known that, that lots of other distilleries did exactly the same. It was you know just the done thing, shall we say? But anyway, so yeah. Interesting. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 1992 private bottling. Uh, let's see what um, what the nose gives us on this, shall we? Now that's really fresh. I mean, that is um, really lemony, and it's kind of really light on its feet for for, for its age, in actual fact. Um, and it feels younger than that 10 year old. I mean, that's kind of quite bizarre, really, when you think about it. Um, it's slightly oiled, it's slightly botanical. It's a green apple, um, barley. It's a, almost kind of a cervic, sort of pulped white fruit as well. Um, yeah, it kind of puts me in mind of, of, of that sort of slightly tequila. Um, Espadin uh, tequila um, or agave character, I should say. Um, I mean, there's absolutely no oak. I mean, there's there's absolutely no oak whatsoever. I mean, um, this has been aged in a, a well and truly <laughs> refilled cask, shall we say? And but it's not suffered from that. I mean, it's like I said, you're getting all of this lovely uh, distillery character um, and. I don't know how much uh, Ian paid for this at auction, but certainly um, it's not hugely complex. Uh, it's pleasant, um, but you know I'm hoping uh, he didn't pay huge amounts of money. And I imagine because it was a, a private bottling with no label or anything like that, I can't imagine it went for a huge amount. But anyway, I'm uh, I'm sure Ian will tell me. But uh, hmm, let's see what passes like. A little fuller, 
I tell you what, that does not taste like the 59%. I mean, that alcohol is so well contained. Um, there's a little masking on the finish. You can feel the alcohol just on the finish, but 59.6%, you know, that is... Oh, that's dangerously drinkable. Um, so again, it has that sort of slight maturity to it. It's got that slight violety edge. It's sort of... Um, the sort of... How Springback seems to sort of uh, mature... Uh, with that kind of like sort of note coming through again quite lemony quite fresh I mean that, obviously the alcohol is, is aiding that um, freshness again I'm getting sort of like you know that slightly agave pulped white fruit some apricot um, barley again no real oak character whatsoever this is all about the spirit um, and you know I mean it's not again like I said it's not the most complex of, uh, of, of of spring banks that I've ever come across but you know it's it's not not a bad bottle I don't care what do you right okay so let's move on to the current 21 year old and um ooh, the colour uh, let's see what those goes That's a bit weird. No, I mean, not, not the aromas, but the fact that I'm just getting a lot of mature American oak. Now, um, I mean, yes, it's 30% American oak, or it's 30% ex-bourbon, so you would expect it, but, I mean, the colour is just, just sort of says, screams sherry at me, you know. Um, so, obviously, 25%, or, or my, uh, that combination of, of the 25% sherry and the 15% port has really made the colour dark, but... I tell you what, the nose is, is opens up with a lot of American oak. Um, it's quite earthy, it's oily, it's full. It's a touch of sherry wood spice, as you would expect, a little bit of tobacco. Um, there's some lovely rummy sweet fruit and a and a touch of a touch of port wood, touch of black fruit, touch of spice, a bit of pepper. Um, I mean, that's an absolutely gorgeous nose. There's a little bit of dunnage. Uh, I mean, that is really complex. I mean, that is harmonious. I mean, all the four cask types are just adding little bits and they're not overwhelming. You're just sort of like getting, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of, of, of the rum cask, a little bit of the sherry cask, a little bit of the American oak. Um, I mean, that is just stunning. I mean, you know, if you were fortunate enough to pick up a bottle of this, then, you know, absolutely gorgeous i mean it's 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 silly money on the auction sites at the moment for this but you know that's that's life at the end of the day but you know and i'll tell you what it it kind of it's very polished or the no the aromas are very polished um i mean i'm guessing because it doesn't because the the, the sherry component is not as as prevalent um it doesn't quite have that usual kind of grittiness to it, to the nose. Um, and yeah, that's that's fabulous. Let's see what that's like. Oh, it's a lot more sherry on the palate. Treacle, tar, dried fruit, walnut. A little bit of peat, dark coffee, a little bit of chocolate. Um, getting a little bit from the American oak, and it's kind of trying to creep through on the mid palate. There's a little bit of the rummy fruit as well. Um, touch of a of, of porty sort of black fruit right at the edges. A little bit of fish oil. Again, really polished. And I think that sort of because the sherry component is not quite so. Um, uh, influential in well not in in terms of the, the the cask makeup although it is adding a lot of of, of the sherry character to the uh, the palette it's not adding so much of that gritty tannic character that I normally and really enjoy with Springbank I mean it's one of the that's one of the reasons why I like uh, I don't mind a bit bit more sherry should we say on the Springbank because it has that kind of character it's not always so kind of like soft and polished and um, what have you there's a, a grittiness to it a sort of a natural kind of feeling to it and um, although I'm not saying that this is a bad bottling in fact it's bloody good bottling I, I love the nose a little bit more than I love the palate uh, shall we say I think um, the palate is slightly more in that kind of um, 
uh, soft and uh, polished sherry character and it, it maybe it lacks a little bit of roughness I don't know you know um just thinking out loud here it's just sort of you know but you know still bloody good can't complain so, so let's move on to the 24 year old single cast bottling let's see what the nose gives us on this end shall we that is stunning I mean that is simply stunning I mean earthy dunnage floors polished wood walnut almost armagnacky dried fruits um i mean i would imagine a refill sherry hoggy um given that yes there's some sherry influence there it's not overwhelming it's just got that wonderful mature old leathery sort of walnutty kind of uh armagnacky character i mean it is Touch of violets, a little bit of peat again. I mean, ah, oh, it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, lovely balance to it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's just now that that that's that's how I love my spring bank. It has to be said. Um, subtly peated, you know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's fine. A bit lighter on its feet on 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 the, on the palette. Again, a bit more sherry character, a bit more raisinated fruit, treacle, tar, a little balsamic note as well. Um, again, it's got that sort of armagnac uh kind of maturity to it. Um, a bit of brine, a little bit, a little bit of mossiness as well, a bit of peat. Um, it's, it's got a, a good length to it, um, and that sort of raisinated fruit kind of lingers as a, a, a dryness, a tannic dryness. Um, maybe not quite so sort of gritty, um, but certainly I'm getting that sort of drying tannic feeling um, on the finish. Uh, a little bit of black fruit as well. I mean, I like that. That's a, that's a, it's a kind of, it's a sort of slightly polished, slightly earthy, slightly edgy. Um, you know, but that... Mmm, aftertaste is absolutely gorgeous, that really is nice. Okay, so uh, finally we're on to the It's All About Springbank Facebook group 27 year old. Let's see what those give us on this end, shall we? Quite elegant, almost delicate in actual fact. Um, pleasantly mature, dusty barley, fish oils. Again, quite citric, quite lemony. I'm in the sort of, I'm in the sort of area of that of that private bottling, um, which is probably not a surprise considering it's you know it was only distilled a sort of like a year before. Um, it's certainly got a, a lightness to it. There's a, um, a a lovely freshness. It's not as oily um, as as some um, some later uh, bottlings and. Um, but there is a bit of a bit of oiliness there's a bit of linseed oil um again not a huge amount of oak so we, we you know we're in that sort of period of time of the sort of you know the, the the recycling of casks era um and um but again you know not having a great deal of oak input just leaves the uh, the, the character of the spirit to come out you know and to, to be fair that's that's not a bad thing. I mean, you know, if you if we sort of just go back to uh, the Waterford uh, um, episode that I did last week, that was one of the criticisms I had of the organic that there was just simply too much oak and not enough, uh, and not enough focus on the barley and the the you know the the toir kind of character. And so here we have, um, you know, practically no oak character whatsoever, uh, bar maybe a sort of a, a, a supportive feeling um and hence you've just got all distillery garrity you can't complain about it you know it's 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 right there it's a you know a product of its time shall we say it's a piece of history you know um and um yeah it's yeah, it's, a, it's a lovely nose it's not too shabby as they say um 
So a plasma. Palette's a lot oilier in actual fact. Um, slightly fishy again, sugar coated barley. It's got a lovely briny note, but there's also quite a sh almost sugary sweetness going on as well. It's, it's I wouldn't say it's a battle, um, but it's quite intriguing, it has to be said. There's a touch of apricot, a little bit of wood spice, um, although again, practically no vanillins. I'm not getting any sort of overt American oak character. Um, it, again, it's got a lovely freshness, lemony, uh, a little bit of linseed oil, and um, there's a little tannins, there's a little grippiness right at the at the finish, um, and um, and the oils kind of sort of linger and sort of uh, you know move through the the. the the, the entire palette, shall we say, and so it's got a lovely kind of progression. And um, like I said again, it's it's pretty much all about the character. It's all about the Springbank. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's it's all about the Springbank, and not all about the wood, which is really nice. And uh, like I said, you know, it, you can't argue with that. And I think it's sort of like you know a really a, a really good bottling at the end of the day. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Firstly, a big, big thank you to my good friend Ian Sunderland for the vast majority of the samples for today's episode of the show. Big thank you to Grant at Springbank for the sample of the 21. Uh, your, so your support is, is, is always continue, uh, is appreciated. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. Um, and yeah, I believe you've enjoyed this uh, this, this review. Um, the, the current 10-year-old, I think, is current 10 year old spring bank it's very consistent maybe a little bit more sherry in uh, in this particular batting but you know nothing to get bent out of shape about uh, and like i said you know i i think it the, the, the 10 year old spring bank is just an all-round lovely bottling these days um the 2005 bottling of, of the 10 year old just goes to show it is a product of its time and this is the wonderful thing about whiskey is that you know it, you're not just drinking you know, juice, uh, you know, you're drinking an, a bit of history, you're drinking something that, that was, you know, how things were done 10 years ago, you know, uh, uh, which could, you know, could be completely different to how things are done nowadays, you know, and it's just, it's just, this is one of the really interesting and intriguing things about whiskey is, is, you know, um, it's, you, you, you're getting a snippet of time, shall we say, and something that's never going to be repeated. So, like, you know, whenever you sort of like, you know, have a dram, you know, just just remember, you know, that, that you are drinking a little bit of history. I know that's a bit corny, but you know. Anyway, um, the twenty-year-old, yep, yeah, sort of really nice bottling. Um, can't complain about that. It, uh, like I said, again, product of its time. Very little oak, uh, all character of the spirit. The uh, current twenty-one-year-old. Um, yeah, I love the nose a little bit more than I love the palate, it has to be said. Um, but still, you know, a very, very good bottling. Um, the 24-year-old, uh, well, that was absolutely stunning, I think. Uh, just just how I like my old spring bank, you know. A little bit of, of, of sherry character um, and lots of spirit character. And the all about spring bank, uh, it's uh, bottling. Again, can't complain about it. Lovely cask. Um... Again, not a huge amount of, uh, of oak character, so you're getting all of the spirit character. And again, having that sort of lightly sort of citric, lemony kind of character. You know, just again, just a, a, a pleasant bottling. So, you know, who, if you've got hold of a bottling of that, um, then, you know, it was it was a good cask. It was a lovely bottling. So, um, so yeah, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I, I, th I think it's been really intriguing, actually. I've uh, really enjoyed this doing this week's episode. Not that I don't enjoy doing these e these episodes of the show, but you know, I thought this was really, really quite interesting. Um, so all that's pretty much left to say is um, well, lockdown's heading our way. I hope, uh, hope everyone's going to be, uh, be okay. So until next week, uh, good afternoon and good running.